morning and welcome back to vlog. Uh, I'm currently looking around the house for my headphones before I go out on my bike ride because um, I brought them downstairs from my bedroom yesterday. That's all I remember. And then since then, I've just, I've just lost them. But look at this. So CO2 canisters, right? You know, instead of having a pump, you just, you just have a CO2 canister. Um, you screw, you screw it on, pierce, pierce the top. When you've had a puncher, you change the tube, put this in and then just pull the trigger and it literally inflates in like half a second. It makes roadside punches so much quicker. You don't have to stand there for ages with a little, with a little uh, pocket rocket pump. You can just use a CO2 canister. The only downside is, uh, you know, these things aren't reusable. So once you've used it, you have to throw it away. So if you get multiple punches in a ride, you're pretty much screwed unless you take multiple uh, CO2 canisters. I'm not sure if these are like recyclable. Uh, so I'm so sure someone let, me, someone let me know in the comment section down below. Basically, these things are like, I don't know, three pounds each, four pounds each. Anyway, I basically went onto uh, eBay the other day and managed to find, oh, we're sliding, a lady that sells them um, in boxes of like, I think there's about 15 in here. And I think, I think off the top of my head, I paid eight pounds 50 for 15 CO2 canisters. So this thing might explode in my pocket today. Let's go and find out. All right, so I uh, originally I was gonna be going out today. I planned to go out at 9 a.m. Uh, but I tactically left it for one hour because according to the weather forecast, it's gonna stop raining at about eight or nine o'clock and that'll be it for the rest of the day, which will be dry. So, you know, the roads were wet earlier on. So I thought, let's leave it an hour, let the roads dry up. That way we can keep the bike nice and clean and everyone's happy. But no, just as I was about to set off right then, it was, there was like a downpour for about two minutes. Just enough for it to get everywhere. All of the roads, nice and wet and greasy and muddy again. So yeah, my bike's probably gonna get dirty, but it's now about quarter past 10 and I'm bored of waiting. So I just wanna go out on my bicycle. And I mean, it looks like it potentially could rain again. So hey, let's just crack on and get the job done. I think it's gonna be one of those days today where it's rained, then it's sunny, then it rains, then it's sunny just all day. Just got myself stuck in a little bit of a rain shower. But now it's like decent again. Roads have dried up within five minutes. But anyway, heading north today into the Ribble Valley, into the trough to do a fairly substantial row on. A fairly long ride. We've got a few, uh, a few UCI races coming up in France next week. So I just want to get a couple of longer rides in the legs to kind of prepare myself for the length of those races. And also I haven't really done any long rides in quite a long time. There's nothing better than just getting out on the bike, pedaling the legs for hours and hours on end. First off though, I just have to find my way through Preston, which is what we're doing right now. And then we'll be into the good stuff. I think the wind today is gonna to be a bit of an issue. It's pretty hectic already. And I'm not even out into like the open roads yet. Woo! This is what we're talking about, boys. It always takes about 40 minutes to get through Preston. But once through the other side, we are rewarded with this. Mega. Just stopped for a quick toilet break. By the side of this, uh, by the side of this hill here, look at it. Ah, what a day, what a day, what a, what a day it's turned out to be. Back at home it started uh, raining as a shower, but man, it's nice up in the valley, eh? Uh, so I've not really got a route planned today. I've not, I don't know, I didn't go out with any kind of direction set in mind. I mean, I wanted to go north, but other, other than that, I had no real direction or idea of where I wanted to go. So now I'm here, uh, I think I'm gonna head over towards Waddington Fell, and uh, which is like a climbs. It's one of the highest points in this area. I mean, it's not that high, it's only like 400 meters, I think, maybe 500 meters, uh, but it's a nice little, uh, it's a nice little climb. It should be a bit of fun. Sticking to all the little lanes, trying to find, trying to find some new roads. All right, cows, how you doing, mate, you all right? Yeah, not bad yourself, thank you. Also, keeping tucked into the hedges to avoid all of this wind, man. Oh no, opening. Ah! So I'm just going down a road right now, along the top of the hill, along the top of a hill outside of a village called Openclough for those of you in the know. Now this is my fourth time down this road this year. Fourth time. But well, there's the sea over there, that's Lancaster. Pretty sweet views, but this is the fourth time. And the previous three times this year, this particular road has been raining. So as you can tell, I'm pretty happy today that it's not raining. All right, so we're coming up to two hours in the clock now, one hour 57. I'm gonna split today's ride into two halves. So the first two hours just kept it relatively steady. And then the second two hours, I'm just gonna just gonna press on a little bit and keep the chain a little bit tighter. So the recording is probably gonna slim down from now on in. 
and I might not speak to you that much until I get home because I will probably be hurting on the little bit and trying to hold high zone two, low zone three and talk to a camera. Ain't actually that easy. But I'm gonna ride along this little ridge here, which is actually part of the route of the Lancaster Grand Prix, which I did three or four months ago now. Drop down the other side, up the traffic ball and climb, then over to Waddington Fell before starting to loop back home. It's always so much better having that resistance of hills when you're trying to keep pushing on the pedals a little bit. Rather than just pressing on along the flat, I prefer to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of gravitational resistance. Look at that, man. No one else is here, just me and the sheep. Absolutely bloody mega. Beautiful. All right, this is the top of the Trafford Boland. Not too much of a view from up here. We're gonna descend down the other side, try and keep on the pedals and crack on. That's one hour done. One to go. Wash two hours, chain tight, which ended up being about 280 average. So kind of like, yeah, kind of pressing on a little bit. Decent, I was pretty happy with that. But man's got absolutely filthy riding through Preston. I got stuck in a downpour for like, I mean, only five minutes it rained. So I got, I got the rain jacket on, but it was just enough to get me and the bike filthy, absolutely filthy. But anyway, I timed this effort pretty much to perfection because I'm about five minutes from home when I finish. So or maybe 10 minutes. So it'll give me a nice little, uh, nice little cool down, which uh, I feel like I need after that effort. It's more of a, it's a complete mental game, something like that. Like it's not, the effort in itself isn't full gas. You're not going full gas, but you're just keeping that consistent effort over a long period of time. So it's all about how you play it mentally. And it's a real good mental test. I'm just cruising now, 132 average since I stopped the effort. But for the effort, my average heart rate was 161. So yeah, I certainly felt it, especially in that last half an hour. Riding back through Preston. So one of the only things about coming back from a wet, dirty ride is the absolute scenes of a tan line you get. <laughs> look at that. It looks like I've been out in the sunshine. From a, I mean, from a distance, it just looks like a normal tan, but then up close, you can see that it's mud. I think that the official name for this is a Belgian tan line. So I got a solid Belgian tan line today. The old legs are pretty cooked this afternoon. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it a little bit in the legs. So I'm trying to lie here on the sofa. All right. All right. I'm trying to lie here on the sofa and have a nap, but I just can't sleep in the days. Like, I just can't do it. Having the ability to be able to nap, to sleep in the day will be good. It's good for recovery. It's good to refresh yourself, but I just can't do it. I've been laying here for about an hour and a half and I've slept for a total, for a total of zero, zero minuto. Zero minuto. Oh uh, mate, can you you can sleep in the day, can't you? You never have any trouble. You lazy little sh So sometimes when I'm playing fetch with Lexi, Sam doesn't like Sam doesn't like the attention being taken away from him, so he just he steals the ball. He doesn't even like playing ball, he just takes it because he knows Lexi Lexi wants it. Get your ball! But then Sam growls at Lexi, so then Lexi doesn't want to get the ball. She's scared. Go and get it. Fetch your ball, fetch it, fetch your ball, fetch your ball, go and get it. Where is it? Come on, fetch it. You see, you see, Sam's got it. And Lexi doesn't want to go anywhere near it. <laughs> go and get it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fighting talk from Sam right there. Go on. Oh. Get it. Get your ball. Get it off him. Don't let Sam take your ball. Oh. Get it. Come on. Sam does not want you to have that ball. Oh. Did you see that snarl then? Did you see that snarl? Get it. Oh, oh, she's thinking about it. Oh, oh, she's got it. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job, buddy. Gave up on the whole sleeping idea. Dogs needed a walk. So that's what we're doing right now. Getting it done. Evening goats. Okay, so I have just come to a revelation or a realization that when I was in France, I punctured, uh, I actually punctured both my tires, I think, throughout like the two weeks that I was there. And I've just remembered that right now, that currently, currently, because I punctured my tubeless tires in France, I put tubes inside there uh, as a temporary measure before I came home to change the tires and, and get new tires. Uh, so that's what we need to do right now. Like these tires, unfor like, unfortunately, they're not that old, so they're not like really that worn which kind of sucks because, um, you know, I don't need new tires, but they have punctured. And thankfully, um, thankfully, shout out to Hutchinson's, the legends have given us another pair of Fusion 
Fusion 5 Performance tires. Rim tape compatible. Okay, cool. Uh, Storm internal compound. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Tubeless ready. That's what we're looking for. Well, let's get these bad boys on the bicycle. First off, we need to take the old tires off and the old inner tubes. And I'm gonna keep the inner tube because it's not punctured, so I can just use that as, I'll fold it back up and use it, use it as a spare, take it out on the rides with me in case I happen to puncture again. Which, if you're talking to Cameron Jeffers, is probably quite likely. And I don't mean that in the sense that I get unlucky or, or, or whatever, or use bad tires. I just always ride on like rough road surfaces and go on adventures off road and stuff. So I always end up puncturing. Bosh, that's the inner tube out. I'm gonna fold this up and store it and reuse it because it's not punctured and it is as good as new. One thing we do need to get rid of though is, uh, is this tire. I'm not gonna throw it away in the bin. I'm gonna send it back to Hutchinson's and then, um, I don't know, I think they maybe, maybe they recycle it. Wait, you can't recycle rubber, can you? I don't know, Hutchinson's asked for the tires back, I think, so they can do a little bit of market research and see how the tires wear and, everything so yeah gonna send these tires back to hutchinson's but right now we need to put a new tubeless tire and some sealant and a valve core in this easy enough this thing here just goes in slots right in there and then we screw on this little gadget here creating a nice little seal now jesus christ fencing now the last time i changed tubeless tires in the vlog I did it a real rookie way where like I put most of the tire on and then that left a little bit little bit of a gap like that at the bottom and then just tipped tipped the sealant in and then kind of rolled it round and pushed the tire on. And it was a real rookie way to do it. And what I mean by that is sealant got absolutely everywhere. However, however, last weekend I was watching my race team mechanic uh, Roundy put some new tires on the race wheels and he did it and he did it in a way which was much more intuitive, much more clean and it looked a lot easier. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you the process of how to do it so you don't get white stuff all over your hands because no one wants that. All right, and the way we do this, once we've uh, got the tire on, got the tube, got the valve core in, we unscrew, unscrew the end bit of the valve like so. Take the bottle of sealant that comes with uh, the Hutchinson's tires, it is this Protect M Max. Pop the old liddy. Now, this thing is gonna go on top of this. It just like kind of slots on top, like, like that. Then we squeeze. Squeeze it all out there. Actually not all of it, about half of half of a bottle per tire. And then as you can see, I mean we made a little bit of mess, but nothing compared to the type of mess we made last time. And it just all it just all fits a little bit and it just all looks a little bit better. I'm gonna put the valve core back in, screw it in nice and tight. The final job of the operation is to blow the tire back up, get some air on it. 80 PSI, that'll do. And then guys, we are absolutely done. Bosh, new tire, new tubeless tire, ready to rock and roll. Looking all fresh. Now I just need to do the back tire, back wheel right there, and we are good to go, back on tubeless. And I've also now got a couple of spare Continental tubes in case I do happen to punch her out on the road. And Bosh, as quick, as simple, and as easy as that, the tires have been converted back to tubeless. Okay, ignore the dirty bike. Uh, that's, 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 yeah. Fresh rubber, man. Back on tubeless. Happy days. Something about fresh tires just makes me happy. But anyway, guys, on that note, on that bombshell, I'm going to end today's video right here. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Man, look at my hands. My bike is definitely not clean. Uh, but that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. It helps out massively with the channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at the same usual time on the Daily Grind at 5 p.m. Peace! And I'll give you a